Hey, it's Kevin with a retouch tutorial of a picture we did on our underwater photo shoot. Note, this is for intermediate Photoshop users. When retouching, you want to do as much non-destructive editing as possible. This means using things like adjustment layers and masks, things that you could fine tune and go back and change later on. It's also important to stay organized. Sometimes when you're working on an image, you have several layers and you can get lost. So be sure to use things like folders and proper naming conventions to make sure you're organized. Because we're using Max the Studio, PC users can substitute Option with Alt and Command with Control. Let's get to retouching. We're going to open up the RAW file straight into Camera Raw in Photoshop CS5. Because I know we're going to work in black and white, the first step is to desaturate the image. Then I'll remove the preset brightness and contrast for a bit more control. Then I'll bump up the exposure. If you hold the Option key, it will show you when your highlights are clipping. Alternatively, you can do the same with the black to see where your shadows are clipping. These two are very important for proper exposure without having to rely on monitor calibration. If you want more mid-tones from the image, you can add some fill light as well. To bring out more detail in our subject, I'm going to turn the clarity up all the way. Then I'll change the color temperature of the image, which affects the overall tone. To get a bit more contrast, I'll use the tone curve and make necessary adjustments. So to start, you can see that Diving Block 2 is a bit dark, so let's bring in a lightened version of the image to mask in. I do this by increasing the fill light in Camera Raw. By holding Option, you can open a copy of this image. Let's paste this image on top of the original, add a layer mask, then fill the mask to black. By filling anything with white, it will reveal what's on that layer. I then make a selection by continuously clicking around the diving block using the polygonal lasso tool and fill it with white. I have a feather of two pixels to soften the selection to make any blends more realistic. By holding Option, I can subtract parts from my selection. Alternatively, if you hold Shift, you can add to your selection. Don't be afraid to make mistakes during your selection because you can always fine tune it. Also, while making your selection with a polygonal lasso, you can hit backspace to undo your clicks. The diving block is looking a bit too bright, so I'll fill the block with a shade of gray rather than white to reveal a bit less. I can make a selection of my cutout by holding command and clicking on the mask itself. Seeing how the number one on the swimmer's diving block is a bit dark, I'll make a selection and fill the mask with the same shade of gray. Then I'll click on the background layer and hit Command J, which duplicates my background layer. Using the patch tool, I make selections of things I want removed from the image, then drag it to what I want to replace it with. The patch tool selection process is similar to the regular lasso, so it is a freehand selection. You can also make your selection using the polygonal lasso tool if you feel more comfortable with it. Then with that selection highlighted, you can switch to the patch tool and then continue to drag the selection you've made. You may choose to use the clone stamp tool, content aware fill, or spot healing brush tool, but I feel most comfortable using the patch as my primary tool. Then I'll use the Levels Adjustment layer to get the background darkened to bring out the subject a bit more. Instead of making a selection, I'll just use a soft white paintbrush and paint the subject back in. Again, if you paint over the edge or miss spots, you can fix it later. To check to see how accurate your mask is, you can Command click the mask to see the selection, or alternatively, you can Option click to see the mask itself. To bring even more attention to the subject, let's make a new layer and add a black to clear gradient. It looks like it's gone a bit too far, so I'll transform it to where I want it and decrease the opacity because it's looking pretty dark. Looking at the subject's face, you can see that there's a weird spill from the lights behind him, so I'll make a new layer and use a brush tool with a low opacity to fill the shadow using an eyedropper tool to grab the appropriate color nearby. Here I'll use the content aware fill to see what happens when trying to remove the shadow. As you can see, it didn't do a very good job. There are times when the content aware tool is great, but there are times when it doesn't work so well. I'll go back to using my trusty patch tool. It doesn't work very well on edges, so I'll use the Clone Stamp tool to fix it. I'll use the Lasso tool to isolate the area I want affected and clone the rest in making sure I resample often. I'll do the same to underneath the diving block as well. I'll get rid of the rest of the distractions with the Patch tool. Sometimes it requires a few uses to get the necessary results. We had a power cable running through the scene because of the outlet placement, so I'll continue to use my Patch tool, Lasso, and Clone Stamp to remove it. I also use a low opacity brush to paint in any inconsistencies in the shading as well. I can see that my gradient is bleeding onto this, so I'll transform it a bit more. Then I'll use the clone stamp and blur tool to blend the edges. We wanted the water to appear more like a mirror, so to do this, I'll make a selection, then add a levels adjustment layer and bring out the midtones. To dodge and burn the subject, I'm going to hold down the option here and click the New Layer button. This brings up a dialog box that gives me options. First, I'll name the layer Dodge and Burn. Then I'll change the mode to Overlay and click Fill with Overlay Neutral Color 50% Gray. On this layer, anything that is neutral gray does not affect the image. Anything lighter acts like a dodge, and anything darker acts like a burn. 
Using a dark brush, I will darken the dark areas on the subject, and I'll do the same with a light brush on the lighter areas. This brings out more contrast with a more obvious separation between the shadows and the highlights. Upon inspection, I notice that the rails are a little too bright for my liking. Let's make a new layer and paint it darker with a low opacity brush. Now it's time to save your layered image into a PSD. Now I want to make final adjustments to the entire image. I'll flatten the image using Command Shift E. I want more contrast and sharpness from the image, so I'll use a high pass filter. Using Command J, I'll take the background and make a new layer. For more contrast and sharpness from the image, I'll use a high pass filter. When the dialog box comes up, you want to adjust it until you see some edge separations in the image. Click OK, then change the blending mode of this new layer to overlay. If you feel like you've gone overboard, you can redo this or lower the opacity of the layer itself. I'll merge this layer with the one below using Command E. We know we want this final image to be 16 by 9, but we don't want to lose too much vertical height, so what we'll do is we'll stretch the image to fit within the wider ratio. We couldn't do this in camera because there was a softbox lighting our subject right out of frame on the left. I don't want to stretch our subject, but luckily in the scene, I have no issue stretching everything to the left of him. I'll make the selection, and using Command J, I'll make it into a new layer. Using the crop tool, I'll then extend the crop past the image. This extends black to the left because it's currently set as our background color. Going on to the new layer I've created, I can now transform this to extend this all the way to the left. Save this as a copy and it's ready for print or web. Here's a before and after of the pictures. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and let us know if you want to see more. Be sure to like us on Facebook on our new page in the description below. And until next time.